Welcome to Bible Study with Fred. I'm in Proverbs chapter 8. And now again, breaking down chapter 8 into separate sections. I'm going to focus my comments as my large print Cambridge Bible has chapter 8 as one paragraph. So um, I'm going to break it down here. And starting, I'm going to read verses 1 to 11. Doth not wisdom cry, and understanding put forth her voice? She standeth in the top of the high places by the way and the places of the paths. She crieth at the gates at the entry of the city, at the coming in of the doors. Unto you, O men, I call, and my voice is to the sons of men. O ye simple, understand wisdom, and ye fools, be of an understanding heart. Hear, for I will speak of excellent things, and the opening of my lips shall be right things. For my mouth shall peace speak truth, and wickedness is an abomination in my lips. All the words of my mouth are in righteousness. There is nothing froward or perverse in them. They are all plain to him that understandeth, and right to them that find knowledge. Receive my instruction, and not silver, and knowledge rather than choice gold. For wisdom is better than rubies, and all the things that may be desired are not to be compared to it. Again, this is the, a thought that's repeated throughout. Wisdom speaks nothing perverse. To the person that has understanding, what wisdom says is clear. Wisdom is more important than treasure. Nothing can compare to it for long life. Remember, Christ is our wisdom, but Christ is God and is not a created being or merely an attribute of God. So be careful how far you take typology as this confused dingbats like the famous Oregon origin who modernists love to quote even though he's nutty as a fruitcake Christ is our wisdom but he is not wisdom as personified here in the feminine I should think that would be clear to a sane man but scholars like Origen often are in love with their minds and not with God so things may not be so clear to them wisdom always speaks truth remember the Persians of the book of Esther one of the cultural traits they had according to Herodotus that was good and believe me they were not usually a good people that you want to emulate but one of their positive traits was their insistence upon raising their children to always speak the truth no matter what it cost them. In fact, the only things they taught their sons were warfare and speaking the truth in all things, or so Herodotus insisted. Here, the writer implores the, implores the simple and the fools to understand wisdom and to have an understanding heart. Now let's read verses 12 to 21. I, wisdom, dwell with prudence and find out knowledge of witty inventions. The fear of the Lord is to hate evil, pride and arrogancy, and the evil way and the froward mouth do I hate. Counsel is mine and sound wisdom. I am understanding. I have strength. By me, kings reign and princes decree justice. By me, princes rule and nobles, even all the judges of the earth. I love them that love me, and those that seek me earth shall find me. Early, excuse me, those that seek me early shall find me. Riches and honor are with me. Durable riches, yea, durable riches and righteousness. My fruit is better than gold, yea, than fine gold. My revenue than choice silver. I lead in the way of righteousness in the midst of the paths of judgment, that I may cause those that love me to inherit substance, and I will fill their treasures. The prudent man is mentioned several times in Proverbs. He's one that regards correction, is circumspect in his dealings, and careful, not believing everything he hears. He also has knowledge and wisdom. God has been prudent with the Christian Paul says in Ephesians 1.8, in fact, God has abounded toward us in wisdom and prudence. Here's a definition also of what the phrase, the fear of the Lord means. Read verse 13 again. Um, you can look at the fear of the Lord is to hate evil, pride, and arrogancy, and the evil way in the froward mouth do I hate. So again, the importance of wisdom in a person's life and in mankind's life in general is emphasized and repeated. If the Jew wanted a successful life on earth, he better get wisdom and understanding. Now Proverbs 8, 22 to 31. The Lord possessed me in the beginning of his way before his works of old. I was set up from everlasting from the beginning or ever the earth was. When there were no depths, I was brought forth. When there was no fountains abounding with water. Before the mountains were settled, before the hills was, I brought forth. While as yet he had not made the earth nor the fields nor the highest part of the dust of the world. When he prepared the heavens, I was there. When he set a compass upon the face of the depth. When he established the clouds above. When he strengthened the fountains of the deep. When he gave to the sea his decree that water should not pass his commandment, when he appointed the foundations of the earth, then I was by him as one brought with, up with him, and I was daily his delight, rejoicing always before him, rejoicing in the habitable parts of his earth, and my delights were with the sons of men. Now here it is made clear that wisdom is an attribute of God, one that often is missing in a list of God's character. God is wise, ultimately wise. Here again, certain analogies can be made to Christ, but the Son of God was not, quote, set up as the attribute wisdom was. He was not, quote, brought forth. But taking the other statements made about wisdom, as this is the way the Bible is written, we see some truths about God the Son. Remember how the Holy Spirit begins talking about earthly kings 
and moves into a description of Satan and Isaiah and Ezekiel. See how we can ascertain truths about Christ here while we are reading about wisdom. This is a great way in the Bible to glean much information on the main subjects of the Bible. Just don't go too far or you'll have a cult. Remember, God makes it hard for you to mess up here as he has put wisdom in the feminine. Proverbs 8, 32 to 36. Now, therefore, hearken unto me, O ye children, for blessed are they that keep my ways. Hear instruction and be wise and refuse it not. And blessed is the man that heareth me, watching daily at my gates, waiting at the post of my doors. For whoso findeth me findeth life and shall obtain favor of the Lord. But he that sinneth against me wrongeth his own soul. All they that hate me love death. <laughs> Excuse me. Here again, in a figurative speech, as if wisdom was a wise woman whose pronouncements we love to hear. Blessed is a man that waits on wisdom. Whoever finds wisdom finds life and gets the Lord's favor. But when you sin against wisdom, you wrong your own soul. And if you hate wisdom, you must have a strong desire to die. A comedian once said, quote, you know, you're a redneck if you've had a male relative die after saying, hey, guys, watch this. There are a lot of, un <clears throat> excuse me, sorry about that. There are a lot of unwise people in the world doing unwise things. The lack of internal discipline, of biblical discipline in America means the government needs to be more and more oppressive just to hold back chaos. As I said earlier on my study in Proverbs, an early American leader said that if Americans won't be ruled by the Bible, they will have to be ruled by the bayonet. A people who hate wisdom can't be trusted to make the right choices for themselves. This is a failing of a democracy without the God of the Bible as its rudder, steering the ship of state. Again, another saying I've referred to, quote, if you won't be ruled by the rudder, you will be ruled by the rocks. Get wisdom and remember, Jesus Christ is the beginning of wisdom and is our wisdom. 1 Corinthians one twenty four. But to them which are called, both Jews and Greeks, Christ the power of God and the wisdom of God. 1 Corinthians one thirty. But of him are ye in Christ Jesus, who of God has made unto us wisdom and righteousness and sanctification and redemption. Colossians 2.2. 2, that their hearts might be comforted, being knit together in love and unto all riches of the full assurance of understanding, to the acknowledgement of the mystery of God, of the Father and of Christ, and whom are hid all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. Now, uh, if, if you had gone back to um, Proverbs 8.22 um, and... Uh, you know, it goes, go through uh, 31 when I read that part. There's a lot of interesting things in there. Um, things to be said about, you know, the dust of the earth and and what their knowledge would have been about um, the nature of the atmosphere. So there's some very interesting things in there. I tickle your ears. I'm not interested in doing that. I want to I want to follow through the text and, and give us something that can re refer us to Christ and uh, to help us. Um, become saved or we're not saved uh, to help us uh, trust in Christ and also to understand what Solomon is trying to tell us here. Okay, so I just want to point out that they had a lot more knowledge than we'd like to think they had uh, that we have in our minds. So please read your Bible, study your Bible, cross reference the verses, pray to God for wisdom and understanding, as I've said. And um, you can purchase my comments on Amazon and Kindle or paperback form. And if you've watched the video this far, Please click like and follow or subscribe. All right, thank you very much.